Hey, hey everyone, we have got a package today. You know what that means? We just got a letter. It means it is time for the thing I've been hinting for for a bit now. We've got here printed out copies of all of our daily draws, plus a couple other uh, characters that I need to add into my badge stock here. We're gonna be making these guys into badges. Okay, so if you don't know me from conventions and have just like found my videos naturally on the internet, first of all, that's awesome. Welcome, nice to meet you. Uh, second of all, this is a chibi badge. This is what I sell at conventions for the most part. So they come with the little clip here so you can put them on like uh, lanyards, keychains, backpacks, whatever. It's it's a sticker without the commitment. It's just a, a badge of the character. So that is what we're gonna be turning our daily draws into. That's what we're doing today. Let's get into it. You gonna be helping me out, Dee Dee? Yeah. Dee Dee's gonna be helping me out today. Fluff is probably gonna help me out too, but like in the most dramatic way he possibly could. Let's get to it. Let's do it. Okay, I. I'm gonna give you all a little trade secret here. Okay, first of all, when I compiled them together to print, I put, you'll notice, random assortments of characters on each page. Well, each of these page setups has five copies. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, right? What we're gonna do now, we're gonna take these five copies and we are going to staple them together. And what that means we can do is cut out all five copies in one cut. We can't do that with lamination, but we can do that with paper and it's gonna save us so much time. So let's get these all stapled together. Yeah, babes. 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 Babes! Yeah, I told you babe, this will be helping. Okay, you wanna come in my lap at least, buddy? Come here. I'm gonna be working though, okay? You can hang out with me, but I'm gonna be moving my arms. I'm trying to convince him not to bite me. He's gonna bite me. So I do have a program that I use to compile all of these characters together onto the sheets for me. I don't do it by hand anymore. I used to do it by hand, but it, uh, was not good. It takes a long, long, long time. Uh, if you want to see a video on compiling things for printing, let me know. Drop a comment. It's something I'm planning on doing anyway, but if it's something you're interested in, I'd like to know. Because <laughs> honestly, I'm kind of just throwing things into the ether. I have no idea if anyone's going to be interested in any of the content I make. I just kind of make what I want to, so. Okay, and we're only doing the corners right now just to kind of get our bundles together. It makes them easier to deal with later. So we will be using far more staples than this. This is just what we're using right now for this step. Uh, so if you're, oh, oh, no, we're not out of staples. I can see there are staples in there. Come on, buddy. Okay. So my math people out there might be looking at these papers and going, wow, that's that's three black rock shooters on there. Five of each of those, and that's 15. Do you really think you're going to need 15 black rock shooter? Um, the answer's no. I am not making 15 black rock shooter for this one convention. Uh, this particular, come on, <sighs> bro, bro, I need you to work today, bro. I got stuff I gotta get done. I leave tomorrow for a convention. Brittany was supposed to also be leaving for a convention, but uh, it just did not work out logistically to try to get one of us to Milwaukee and one of us to Alabama this weekend. So sorry, Alabama people, I'm not going to Comic-Con this year. Hopefully next year, fingers crossed. I wish conventions would stop all scheduling on the same weekends, but also there's only so many weekends. And also I like having some weekends at home too, so I, I can't have a convention every single weekend, but 
Uh, but so the this is a larger set than I would normally do. Normally I do two of each character to test them out, except characters that I'm fairly certain will not sell at all. Like, you know, my OCs here probably aren't going to be selling. I'm just making those for me. I only put one of each of them, but I put one for each stuff. So that's still 10 copies of something that I probably will never sell. Uh, if I'd thought it through, I probably would have only done one copy and just split it between the two stocks, but I didn't think it through. Okay, last page. Okay, all our pages are now stapled together. So we can just easily grab a, a chunk of pages. We'll show you how we're gonna cut them now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you closer, get, get a nice better shot. So now that we've got our paper chunk, we're ready to go cut in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our stapler again, and we're gonna start stapling between each of the characters and in our other two corners. This is to just kind of give stability to the whole thing. Okay, and maybe, maybe just an extra one like, here since there's a bunch of characters over there you'll kind of get a feel for how many you need as you do it more Brittany uses more than i do i'm certain i could get away with less but this is what i'm comfortable with staple wise use however many you want see if it were Brittany, she would have stapled these spots and probably here and then cut the page in half and then also here and here before she started probably there as well you know just whatever whatever you're comfortable with so we're gonna start cutting. We're gonna start with, uh, where should we start with? Let's start with Artemis, since we started drawing with Artemis. I usually try to find a straight edge to start my cut off in because it makes it easier to end my cut. We're going to leave a like padding around the entire shape in white. Uh, leave your outward corners pointed to just kind of give it a more What's the word I'm looking for? A more dramatic silhouette. And then see, since we started on a corner here, we can just end off our cut like that. Okay, and we're gonna furl them out, make sure that we've got a pretty similar uh, silhouette around all of them, because that means that our papers are aligned correctly. And then we're gonna throw him into the What's that called in a bucket? Uh, the tray onto the pile. And we're gonna cut out the next one. So a couple things. You need to kind of keep track of what your your inward cut areas are looking like. Um, we'll use Nessa here as an example after I get her cut out. Uh, if you don't recognize some of these drawings, it's because I didn't do them for daily draws. I did them before that. If you check out my um, everything I drew during the quarantine times video, then they're all in there. Okay, so right here between the legs, we could just cut it off straight there, but it's not going to be as nice a silhouette. So for here, we are gonna go just the tiniest bit in, just to give it a more interesting silhouette. Um, but we did not cut up here in the hair because that would have made too flimsy a silhouette. Does that make sense? So it's up to personal preference, but you'll, again, you'll get a hang for the more of these you make. Okay, I'm going to set up the camera in a way that I can cut better because this is ludicrous. It is very, very difficult to have the cutting on camera for you with the way it's set up right now. Um, and then, yeah, I'm gonna start uh, cutting. Once I have the camera set up in a way that makes sense, the cutting will be much faster. Ah, the thing is, I really do like this camera angle, so maybe I'll at least finish cutting this page with it before we move on. Okay, we got a little close to his ear there, but that's okay. As long as we've got a white border around it, we're good. And I don't call it broken unless it breaks into the, um, into the line art. But yeah, see? We're good. My little Nando's are good to go. Okay, that is trash.
Now's a good time as I need to mention that it really is important to get yourself good scissors. If I'm thinking of doing like a equipment to use video at some point, and if I do, I'll do like more detail, but just so you know, these are the best scissors for a project like this. Okay, see so now this one, I would like to start my cut here, but there's no staple here. So when I got to the end of the shape, it would just start falling apart. So while this would be the perfect cut to start, I'm instead going to start cutting up here on the ear. Because then I end close to a staple, so I have something that's still holding my pieces together by the time I get there. It takes a bit of extra time to get your silhouette, like, super tight, super clean, but, um, the end result is well, well worth it. Okay, and then this guy has got a floating piece, so we're kind of gonna just play it by ear with that. Again, there's no like one perfect correct way to do this. I'm gonna just show y'all what I do, and then if you go, oh, that looks like a good way to do it and wanna do it that way, great. If you've got your own way of doing stuff, then do it that way. But I'm just adding a little bit of texture around the ball here, just to give it an interesting little silhouette. See, there we go, beautiful, all right. There is one page cut. We're gonna cut the rest of them out and we're gonna hyperlapse set up to do that. Let's get to it. is here right now while I'm editing, just so you know. And he says hi.
And with that, they are all cut out. Now, time to start laminating. First, let's clean up our paper trash. Okay, now, not to turn this into an unboxing video, but I just got a new laminator and I'm really excited to test it out. So we're gonna open it up, see if it's any good. The internet says it's way faster than my current laminator and I hope they're right. It was uh, pretty pricey. By pretty pricey, I mean like a pretty low price for a laminator, but I up until now have only had I mostly have like the $20 Walmart laminators. I've had one laminator that I think was like 40 bucks uh, that heats up fast, but it goes through so, so slow. So hopefully this one ups my, uh, my lamination speed. Yeah, beautiful. What is this? Why is there a metal piece in here? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. It came with some lamination sheets. Thanks. And here we go. Ooh. I really like these. I might use these for something. Okay. There we are. Our new laminator. Okay. I will get him set up and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so I was looking through the instructions to try to figure out what in the world this metal piece is that they threw in. Um, it's not on the diorama, which by the way, this is this is my instructions. If you didn't know that this was a release lever, you wouldn't know that's a release lever. So since I know laminators, I can tell you this right here, this little part here, this is a release lever. If it gets stuck, this stops the roller so you can pull it out. There's nothing in this instruction booklet to tell you that. Um, it says, does it have a release lever? Yes, it does. It doesn't tell you where it is. Um, it tells you all the safety stuff. Okay, I guess it does tell you here, but it doesn't tell you like what the really like it's it's labeled right here. You could have just labeled it or you could have had like I know did there's all this empty space here. You could have had some text explaining some of these things that you just have pictures for. I mean, it's not that hard to figure out, but the release lever is one of those things you actually need to know. Also, I see absolutely nothing in here about this little metal bit, so I have no idea what it's for. <laughs> It's just a thing I own now. I wonder if it was even supposed to come with it. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna get set up so I can start laminating. It was nice of them to throw in a couple lamination sheets with the laminator, but um, I already got my own. Okay, so 
first we're gonna make sure we have a clear spot to actually set up our lamination pages. We're gonna take a sheet of lamination, open it up. You can see it's bound on the one side here, so it's kind of just like a little folder. So we're gonna open it up and then we're gonna take the get Oh, whoa, 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 don't you do that. Okay, we're just gonna make a pile right here of all of our little chibis. You're gonna take your little guys and you're gonna put them with enough room between the top of the character and the top of the page that you can do your badge punch. And then enough room between the characters that you can cut it out. And then we're just gonna fill up our pages. Um, I do think though with this particular design, yeah, see if we swap that one upside down, we got more room so we can move this one over. And that means we can fit a fourth, which is fantastic. I thought for sure this one would be too, too big to fit for. The smaller ones you can fit five to a row. Okay, we're gonna close it up, press it down. And now, let's turn on our laminator. While we're waiting for the laminator to heat up, we have two copies left of this design. Normally I would make a pile of all of my singles and doubles, anything that doesn't make a full row by itself, they'll go in later. That way we keep most of the characters together in these fully laminated sheets. Um, but we are going to take one of them and make its own pile. We're gonna have this pile back here be one of each character. I don't usually do that when I do a restock, but we're doing it this time because I wanna cut out one of each to have for the display and to have for the video, so yeah. Okay, now this laminator advertised that it heats up very, very quickly. Oh yeah, look at that, it's done great. Okay, let's push it through, see how we look. For everything you need to laminate, and everywhere you need to laminate. No matter where or what you need to laminate, it's easy. So this laminator is no faster than my old laminator was. In fact, it, it might be slower. But it's got a nice wide angle. And it's a good transportable size and it was kind of pricey so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna look at the bread so i'm gonna be happy with it okay perfect we're gonna take our finished sheet we're gonna make a pile um man i really wanted the pile to be in frame but i can't uh really think of anywhere that would be in frame give me a second okay now finished page I'm gonna start a pile right here. I'm gonna keep a little pile of short characters just in case I have tall characters later to put them with. So again, we're gonna line them up with enough room between them to cut out and enough room above them to put the hole punch. And we're gonna grab one of each character to put to the side to cut out displays for the video. Okay, so being it looks like even if we turn them upside down, we're not gonna fit four, or we're not gonna fit five, so that's okay. So there's one bean. Let's grab one of you. Okay, so we're gonna push it through the laminator, and while that is laminating, we're gonna start our next one. He's a single and double which we'll put our single and doubles into the box so we know that's them. And you know what, we'll put our one of each character in the box too. Just so it's easier to find. They are the same right now, but they won't be forever. Oh, I wonder how many bigs we can fit. There's no way you can fit more bigs than beans, is there? Nah, definitely not fit more bigs than beans. Okay, one big. The one of every character. Close you off. Put you in the pile. Put you in the laminator. 
and then start setting up the next page. That's what we're doing. I'm gonna hyperlapse it. Let's let's get them done. Okay, so this was supposed to be a video where I was really in my element and, you know, knew what I was doing and didn't mess anything up. Uh, but also, this is my first time doing chibis in my new house. And I didn't really have a good work setup set up. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to divide all of the characters up by series. We'll give the laminator a break for a second. We're gonna divide all the characters up by series so that um, I can grab one of each of everyone, put them to the side, just have them done. And then when we start putting everyone together, they're at least by series. So that'll make organization a little better in the future. So yeah, we're gonna do that. I guess we gotta run this guy through the, the laminator first before we do that. I really almost grabbed my my one that I pulled out like, oh, there's one more of you. Yeah, no, there's not. Okay. Finish off that page. Run you through the laminator. And again, normally I don't pull aside the one of each. This is just because these are new characters, so they need displays of them. Okay. You gotta be really careful that your lamination sheet as it's going through doesn't grab a little piece of paper on the bottom and suck it up through. It's messy. It's really messy. Just don't do it. Okay, let's organize. Okay, now that we've gotten them organized, we're gonna turn the laminator back on. And get back to it. So I figured out what the little metal piece is for. It goes in the back of the laminator, like that. Ugh, if it'll go in. Uh, it makes a little ramp to keep the papers from bending as they come out. I've, I've never had a laminator that has something like that before, so I didn't know it was a thing. So I got it in place for the last little bit, so <laughs> we'll see how it works. Okay, 
And with that, we are done laminating our little chibis. Uh, that means our next step is to cut them out. So yeah, let's let's get to that. Gotta clean up all our lamination stuff first though, so let's do that first. Let's do it. these guys to be badges yeah we want clips on them so if you see there is a hole here that the clip goes through we're gonna need to punch the hole into there now the easiest way well not the easiest way the only way to really get to where we need to punch here is to cut above each of the characters heads so we're gonna go ahead and divide all of our sheets cutting so that we can put a hole punch above each of their heads that's what we're doing so this page right here i'll, I'll move okay I'll, I'll set up a better camera angle so we can no no this this is a fine movie example okay so this page right here right these characters to get above their heads we're gonna cut at these guys feet right so we're gonna do it like that. And just cut it in half there. And now these two, and actually these two, we're not gonna be able to punch either. So we're just gonna kinda do a little cut like that. Do a little cut like that. Do a cut like this. And then do a cut like that. Now, when we come in to hole punch these, We'll be able to reach our punch right in, nice and easy. This one's not especially easy, but it's going to fit. It's going to work out fine. Beautiful and beautiful. Okay, right, see? Now all of these can be cut out into badges. So I'm not going to be doing all of the hole punching right now. We're just going to be cutting them in half. So let's do that. By the way, while I'm thinking about it, you might notice that there is a bag on my hole punch. This is not how the hole punch came to me. The hole punch came to me looking like this with this little stopper on top. I, I only have one to show you because I just ordered a new one because I'm... I was supposed to be doing two conventions this weekend. Brittany was going to do one, but then school got too crazy. And anyway, that's a whole other thing, but... So it's supposed to have this top on like this you know you just kind of open up empty out like you would any normal hole punch the problem is do you see how many are in this bag when you go through this many badges you acquire a lot of hole punches in fact it's time to empty out this bag if you want to join me let's do it okay this <clears throat> is my badge punch collection You can see it's a very nice big container and it is full of individual little punches of lamination. I say it's full, it's not quite full. So we've still got this much more we can fill. So we're gonna empty our bag into our punch collection. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this when it's full. I've just been obsessively collecting them. I don't know. I thought it would be nice to have a big container full of them. And now that I've almost got a big container full of them, I'm honestly not sure what I'm going to do with it. Probably display it proudly. I mean, how many people can really say that they got one of these? Am I right? Anyway, this was a whole tangent because we're not even hole punching right now. We're just cutting in half. So let's cut everything in half, huh? Let's do it. Okay, 
And now that we are cut in half, these guys, unfortunately we're calling them good to go. Um, I have a convention this weekend. I'm actually leaving tomorrow at the time of filming this. So these guys are for that convention. They do not get cut out right now. That is why we pulled out one of each character for us to cut out right now so we can see them all cut out. So yeah, let's cut these all in half. They're gonna be, I mean, this one will be fine, but most of these are gonna be pains to cut, but we'll cut them, we'll punch them, we'll cut them all the way out and then we'll see how they look. Let's do it. So since there's a bag over this, you can't especially see where you're supposed to be punching. It's kind of a muscle memory kind of thing since I've done so many of these, but there are little metal guides right here that show you where it is and then it's just kind of in the middle of that. So you kind of get a feel for how deep it is, but if you want to see it like on the thing, you can see the little metal guide there and that's where the punch is. So yeah, that's how we're doing it. You're not going to be this fast starting out. I have done so many of these to get, the, I don't know, the confidence I have to just kind of go in and do it. It's also kind of about where you place your hand underneath to hold the punch in place, but again, it's one of those practice makes perfect kind of things. All right, now we cut them out. Let's do it. Well, And with that, they are done. Let's take a look at them. Now that we have got our chibis all cut out, we can do some very, very practical things with them, like use them to decorate our tripods, or use them to decorate our accidental all-year Christmas decorations, or use them to decorate our lamination shelf, the thing everyone has, or wear them on a lanyard. It has the cat's approval. We can hang them on a lampshade, or on our chandelier, or on our cat tree, or we can take them to the convention and finally add them in with the rest of the chibi collection. 
And now is the perfect time to give a huge thank you to everyone who supports me and my art, whether it be at conventions or by supporting me online, like you here watching this video that I spent way too long making of these chibis I spent way too long making to add to this collection I spent way too long making. But honestly, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. This really is what I love doing with my life and your support makes it so it's something I can do. So thank you.